I'm Kieran Anderson, group publisher here at Applied Radiology, and I have the pleasure today of speaking with Dr. Vaskin Dilsizian, professor of radiology and chief of the Division of Nuclear Medicine at the University of Maryland Medical Center in Baltimore. Dr. Dilsizian is also the president of the Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging, and who will be hosting their virtual conference later this month. Dr. Dilsizian, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Karen. It's, it's a pleasure to be uh, uh, having interviewed about uh, the entire society. It's been a wonderful year as a president. Doctor, from your perspective, what are some of the latest updates in nuclear medicine and molecular imaging? You know, what kind of, what, what should the attendees expect to learn this year? Well, remember, uh, the whole field uh, being multidisciplinary, we start with radiochemistry. What are the new radiochemistry? What are the new radio traces out there? What's the phase one, two, three clinical trials that are anticipating for FDA approval? That's something that all of us would like to know where the field is going. The second, obviously, is that the therapeutics. Remember, the word theranostics is you diagnose the disease and then follow up with a labeled treatment to treat the cancer, for example, therapy. So the therapy arm, as you know, is, a, is, an, is an exponential growth for the field. And so some of the very exciting topics for, for our meeting is to attend these therapeutic sessions. Prostate cancer, right? You know, we're treating them, neuroendocrine tumors. What else is in the horizon? What other uh, cancers are we gonna be able to treat? Uh, this is a very, very hot topic. Uh, and besides that, as you know, once you have the radio traces for diagnosis, you also wanna have the proper instrumentation. So we wanna learn about, well, what's new in the instrumentation? Where is PET-CT moving? Uh, is it be because there's a, a company already doing a whole body PET CT? And within a few seconds, you get the whole body imaging. And you can imagine the physiology of multi organ imaging simultaneously. Quantification of different radio tracers, flow, metabolism, uh, radio tracer uptake, and receptor imaging. All of these things are very, very exciting. So if you take the whole field, and then of course the technologists would like to know what's their next uh, uh, educational pathway. Should it be hybrid PET CT, PET MR, right? So the, not only we have advances, but we have hybrid systems. So if you're a nuclear medicine technologist, should you also be certified in MR, in CT? So um, so do you see why the the society is is so well organized with so many uh, components and, and uh, disciplines within it that becomes exciting and it it really serves the needs of of all of us. And and for me as a cardiologist. We say, well, why would I want to do a nuclear medicine meeting rather than a cardiology meeting? I can tell you it's because cardiology is applied medicine. What I would like to know is what are the discoveries? Where is the, what is the next radio tracer coming from? What's the next instrumentation that's happening? How about the software that we're going to be using to apply uh, our, uh, our imaging? So that's why I think the field is exciting. And I, and I'm, I have no doubt that we will pass the 5,000 mark for registration by come July. That's incredible. I really appreciate that that sort of uh, highlight there. And are there any special sessions that you might want to highlight if in closing comments? If you you know anything else you might want to add about the meeting? Well, I, I you know I, I obviously as a president of the society, I encourage that. I mean, obviously we wouldn't have picked any of the sessions that are not good to be there. So all of them are great. But but the the key to your answer the question is, you need to be attending the plenary sessions every day. Uh, there are three days, you have to attend those because they are wonderful key speakers are being recognized with special awards uh, for their lifetime achievements. And I think that those three plenary sessions are a must. And if you don't have time to listen to all the meetings, remember the other advantage of this virtual meeting is that you can have an on-demand review. So if you're in China, Europe, United States, Australia, different time zones, we don't have to worry because you can always watch it on demand anytime you want to. And this will be available throughout the year. But the must sessions, I would say, would be the plenary sessions, uh, uh, the Young Investigator Awards. You want to make sure who's coming up next, what are the next generation uh, thoughtful leaders uh, that's going to hold and, and move the torch forward. And you also want to listen to the last uh, Henry Wagner uh, -like lecture, where four authorities in the field will summarize uh, all of the abstracts in a very succinct way so that and, and give their overview of, of what needs to be done in the future. 
Well, Dr. thank you so much for a moment to speak with us here at Applied Radiology about all that's happening at the uh, Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging under your, your uh, leadership as president. Uh, I want to thank you again for the time and wish you and your colleagues and peers a fantastic uh, conference this year. Thank you very much. I'm grateful for the interview and I look forward reading the pages of Applied Radiology. Thank you, sir.